this is a description of a build of a solar heater for home heating that I built at TOG over the last two years and I have it up and running now. Um, I've always been fascinated with um, the fact that you could heat your house with solar power long before um, panels and um, things start appearing on roofs here. Um, you know, in any time of the year, or even in winter, if you go in a greenhouse or sit in a car on a sunny day, it can be it can be quite warm, even though it's cold outside. So that's the principle on which uh, solar thermal heating works, whether it's air heating or water heating. Um, and this is really old technology. Um, I, I possibly have the the lowest tech project on display here tonight because it's so old. Um, I found this ad um, from 1900 um, and it's it's an ad for a, a solar water heater. So we're talking uh, 120 years ago now and you can see this thing, um, you know, for $25, um, capture the sun's heat, gives hot water all hours of the day and night, no delay and so on. So so this is really, in a way, old technology. You can see the the, the illustration on the left of the thing on the roof and the pipes coming down to the bath so um what i did was uh, I, I wanted to build one of these so um i just start building a box from uh sheets of osb in 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 tog you could use ply any kind of sheet material anything you want really um what i did was uh that's a full sheet of in this case osb you know, an eight by four sheet. Um, the sides are about a foot deep, and I painted it with black bitumen paint to give it some waterproofing because this thing's obviously going to be outdoors all year round. Um, so inside the box, it's insulated with um, Kingspan insulation, the kind of foam stuff. Uh, again, you can just buy a sheet of that. It's very easy to cut, and I've just lined the inside of the box with that, um, the back and the four sides. And because I'm going to blow air in and out of this to collect the heat, you can see uh, one of the um, five inch holes that I've drilled uh, in, in one corner and, and a similar hole up in the opposite corner. Um, here's the box mounted on the wall. That's an east facing wall. It just happens to be um, the wall of my garden, and I thought. Um, for a prototype it's a good place to put it up there you'll see on the left that's a heat exchanger um, air to water and I, I'll explain more about that as I go along um, so you can see they're painted with that black bitumen paint and this material you see a roll of it on top there it's um, roofing membrane it's the stuff that's under the tiles or the slates on your roof and it's waterproof and it's breathable so moisture from your house can can get out through it but it doesn't let rain in and it's very cheap and um, that's i bought a 25 meter roll of it and i even though i've painted my box with bitumen paint i've surrounded it with that as well and it, and it gives a really good waterproofing um so something you know has to collect the heat so what i've used is uh they're just sheets of corrugated iron that you see on roofs um they're cheap uh, when you get them, they're that nice shiny silver color. So I had to paint them and you can get very, um, they're called selective absorbers. They're, they're paints that very selectively absorb infrared light compared to um, ordinary visible light. But, you know, it's expensive. I just used um, black masonry paint, matte paint, and that seems to work very well. Um, so that's my my that's the actual collector thing that's collecting the heat. So there they are roughly in place. Um, what I did was now I could take the air into that box and obviously the hot air comes out the other side. Um, I wanted to transform that heat into warm or hot water. Um, and what I what I did was I used the heat exchanger to do that. So. I just bought one and um, that that's it there and um, it's a radiator it's like a car radiator if it's got a water inlet and a water outlet uh, you pump water through that and at the same time you blow your warm air 
from one side to the other and it transfers the heat from the air to the water. Um, there it is mounted in that box that I showed you on the left, separate box for the heat exchanger, but built the same way, just OSB lined with Kingspan insulation, um, hole in the top, hole out the bottom, and I just have a baffle that the warm air gets directed around the back, out the front and out the bottom. And I have a fan at the bottom uh, just, just circulating the air. Um, I suppose I have to have a control system. Well, I don't really have to, but uh, being TOG and we do all this uh, electronics and fancy stuff, well, what else would you use but an Arduino? I mean, it's three euros. Um, I have a water pump to circulate the water. I have a fan to blow the air. So I just used solid state relays to uh, handle the mains voltage and the Arduino just turns them on and off. Um, very simple, uh, it's been very reliable so far. Um, one thing I bought was a flow meter from AliExpress, uh, very cheap, 20 euros. Um, it, it, I want to do some calculations on how much power I'm getting out of this thing. So I need to know the flow rate of the water as one of the measurements to be able to do that. So in my water circuit, I have this flow meter and it's, it's surprisingly accurate and reliable. I, I did a few tests on it and actually measured the volume of the water that it said it was metering and it was it was bang on. Um, so I need to measure temperatures around the system, the air temperature in the panel, the temperature of the water in and out of the heat exchanger, the temperature of the water in and out of the underflow heating manifold. So I bought 10 of the one wire temperature sensors these 18B20 sensors. Now I bought 10 in one go, which hopefully they all were made in the same batch, but I don't know that for sure. So what I did was I got all 10 of them and I kind of had to do some testing and normalizing of their, their readings. So what I, I got a big mug of really hot water, plunked them all in there, started reading them up into the laptop. And as they cooled down, um, I, I just gathered all the data and I was able to tell which one was reading a bit on the high side, which one was reading a bit on the low side and so on. And I kind of added an offset factor. Uh, I, I picked one as baseline and I, I, I offset all of the others relevant to that. Um, I, I'm measuring fairly small temperature differentials here. So I, I, I need to take that into account. I think best to worst, there was about a degree in it. So it, it's worth doing this and having some kind of calibration data if you're using multiple sensors. You could use um, a more expensive, uh, more accurate sensor. Um, and I'll, I'll think about doing that, but this seemed to work okay for now. And um, there they are in the water um, as the water cools down and I are logging all my data. Each of them has an address. That piece of yellow tape is just the, uh, the hex address that each one has. So I, I know which is which when I read the data. Um, that's, that's the existing underfloor heating manifold. It was there already, um, but never connected. So on the left, that that's the circulating pump. And what it does is it, it draws water up out of the underfloor, out the top, the pipe is not connected yet in that picture, sends it out to the heat exchanger. The warm water comes back in the other pipe through that red hand valve and down the two red pipes in, into the underfloor. So. Uh, it's just circulating water around. And I know from the flow meter, which is now above that pump connection, I know the, the, the flow rate in the system. Um, so to calculate it, I need to do some calculations and to calculate the power I'm producing and the energy I'm getting, I need to know the flow rate. I need to know the, the temperature differential uh, across the, the, the inlet and outlet of the floor, if you like. And if I know those things and I know the heat capacity of water, I can do some power calculations. So uh, there's the flow temperature and return temperature. And um, there's only a little over a degree in it. So like I said earlier, it's important to um, normalize those temperature sensors or have accurate ones anyway, because you're dealing with fairly small differentials. Um, some of the performance I'm getting now with this thing. So on a, on a, you know, we're getting into May here, 20th of May, and that's kind of typical on a good sunny day. I'm seeing 700 watts plus out of this thing. 
Um, I'm also totting up the energy, how many kilowatt hours as, as it runs during the time the sun is shining on it. Um, but that's going to typical 700 watts I'm getting out of that panel. Um, here's, here's the most energy I ever got out. Um, I This is again in late May, getting to the end of heating season. But this thing on an east facing wall that's only getting the sun up to around 1 p.m. I was getting three and you know 3.75 kilowatt hours out of it. Um, so that, that's a kind of useful bit of power to put into your underfloor. Um, I did some tests during the summer. We're in July now, middle of July. And by, with the fan switched off, so the panel is just roasting away in the sun, um, not drawing any heat out of it. And I was curious to know what the maximum temperature of the air in the panel would get up to. And there you go, almost 82 degrees centigrade, which is extremely hot. You know, water boils at 100. If you if you, you would burn yourself in there at those kind of temperatures. The thing below the set point is the set point I have set for the fan to come on. When the panel gets up to 23, it would the fan would normally switch on. But I had it disabled for this test. So, so there you go, over 80 degrees from this panel. Um, so it's up and running, um, not in an optimal position. It's east facing. I, I don't get sun all day on it, but it was the it was the easiest place to mount it for a prototype. Um, future plans: I, I could make up to three more panels. Another one beside this one, also facing east, and potentially two slightly smaller ones south facing on the wall of my shed. Um, I could also and probably will tinker with the control system, a more sophisticated algorithm to turn things on and off. Um, maybe more accurate sensors. If I build multiple panels, maybe some kind of valving on the air system. So if one panel is in shade, I'm not blowing air through it. There's no point in trying to take heat out of a panel that's, that's not in sun. Um, so that, that's kind of uh, future work to be done. Um, so just having built a thing and it's up and running, some kind of considerations. Um, it's only suitable for wall mounting. It's, it's too heavy and impractical to try to put this on a roof. So if you have a south-facing wall, especially south-facing, um, it's, it's very simple to build. Uh, you, you just put it up there and away it goes. Um, I, I paid good attention to weatherproofing. As I showed you, that bitumen paint and the roofing membrane. And it's it's been out now for over a year and it, it's still in great condition. It's, it's definitely for cheap waterproofing. It was worth doing that roofing membrane as an extra. Um, you could cut the cost of this. I, I tended to buy all the materials um, new. You know, you just sheets of ply around and the, the sheet of polycarbonate on the front, which I used to glaze it, that's about 100 euro. I bought that. You could use plastic sheeting. Um, you know, you could cut the cost of this uh, if you're clever and you're willing to uh, accept not new materials. Um, one big way to cut the cost and complexity is to just use the air directly. So, so if you take air from your house and you pass it uh, through this thing, it comes out the other end warmer and you pipe that straight back into your house. The reason I did the water thing was that the underfloor heating manifold was already there. The um, water pipes were already in the floor, so I just wanted to put it to use. And I bought that heat exchanger. I think it was about 160 euro delivered. But you could eliminate all that cost and complexity by just blowing the air directly. You'd also get a quicker response uh, in terms of if it's sunny now, you straight away, you're blowing warm air into your room. Um, by doing what I'm doing, I'm kind of storing the heat for slower release, which has its benefits too. Um, so you can certainly cut the cost of it and complexity if you want to. Um, one other consideration, if you're going to do this, is that the cost of solar electric uh, photovoltaic panels is falling so fast, it's shocking. Um, and they're becoming so cheap, it's, it's almost cheaper. Certainly, if you buy all these materials from new to build something like this, um, it's not especially cheap. Um, so it's worth thinking about solar electric. Now, solar electric panels you put on a roof, um, this thing's not suitable for a roof. If you have a south-facing wall only, this is a good idea. 
but um, it's worth thinking about solar um, electric if, if you have some space. Um, so if you're interested, if you want to know more or you want to uh, build one even, um, get in touch with me and I could help you build one in TOG. Thanks a lot.